So we've got Anthony and Sissy again. They're still participating in that role Rama. Um, looks like from before, Sissy's gained a little bit of weight. Um, same with same with Anthony. We won't go there though. Actually, we just did, but forget about it. So we want to know how fast does the pair roll backwards together. So it makes sense that even before we do anything with this problem, we know that they're rolling backwards. So we should come out with a negative, and in this case, we do come out with a negative. So that's good. Um, but assuming we don't have the work done yet, we would just know that I'm going to have a negative. I don't know what that negative is quite yet. All right, so to begin with, we have Anthony, and we have Sissy separately, and then one jumps into the other one's arms. So that's why the mass combines later on. All right, so we know that Anthony is 75 kilograms. That's where those 75s are coming from. We know that Sissy is 60 kilograms, so that's where those 60s are coming from. And then we also know that um, Anthony is being fancy here, and he's skating backwards at 3 meters per second. So backwards is what's giving me the negative over here and at 3 meters per second. Um, and we know that Sissy jumps into his arms with a velocity of 5 meters per second. So that's where that 5 is coming from in the same direction. So in the same direction also means that it's negative because if Anthony's direction is negative to begin with and hers is the same direction, that would mean that hers is also negative. So in the end, it does make sense that we come out with a negative answer because both are going in the negative direction. So it doesn't even need to ask us how fast do they roll backwards together. It could just say what's their what's their velocity, and we know that they're they're traveling in the in the backwards direction based on what negative means to us in this problem. So just like any of the problems, just take this step as one, this step as one, this step as as one, and then go from there. Isolate for v, and we're left with negative 3.89 meters per second. Go ahead, take that number, plug it back in for V, make sure that this whole side equals this whole side, and we are good to go. All right, if Anthony's skating towards Sissy when she jumps, would their combined vo final velocity be larger or smaller than the answer to part A? Um, again, um, if you're familiar with a couple pages ago when we, when we looked at a very similar problem to this, uh, we're just going to take one of these numbers and we are going to uh, flip the sign because instead of both traveling in the same direction what happens if one's traveling in an opposite direction doesn't matter if we flip sissies or anthony's just matters that we flip one of these velocities whether or not it's this one or this one is just personal preference and we would see it should make sense that we end up with a velocity that is closer to zero because they're starting to cancel each other out their masses are not entirely the same, but they're similar enough. Their velocities are similar enough where uh, we shouldn't see too much of a uh, shouldn't see something too much higher than zero or too much lower than zero. All right, so let's take a look at number eleven. We've got Valentina, who's a Russian cosmonaut. She's outside her spaceship. Um, she's just floating there. So that's something that this problem doesn't do a great job of showing, but just floating there would be at zero meters per second, we're assuming. Um, and then she is a certain distance from the ship. Her tether catches on a sharp sharp metal and is severed. So she's got to toss her camera to get back to the ship. All right, so to begin with, we have a person holding their camera in a space suit. So that's her holding the camera. Um, She's in a space suit. We'll just use our imaginations there. My drawings suck to begin with, so you really got to use your imagination. Um, but then to end with, if she's just floating here, she's never going to be able to get back to her to her spaceship, even if she's like flailing her arms trying to trying to move over this way to her to her spaceship. She would never be able to um, do that because fix that drawing a little bit she would never be able to do that because there's no air molecules around if there's no air molecules around she's got nothing to push off of um, so it's not like in the movies where somebody just like flails in outer space and they can swim over to the uh, the spaceship it doesn't work that way so in order to get to the spaceship she has to throw the camera one direction so that 
it pushes her in the other direction. It's the only way she'd be able to get to back to her ship. All right, so we know that if there's a force acting in one direction, then there'll be an equal but opposite force in the other direction based on Newton's third law. And Newton's laws are, are very, very interrelated with momentum, which we'll talk about more in class. Okay, so we know that Valentina is 68 kilograms. That's what it tells us. We know that the mass of the camera is 2 kilograms. That's where that 2 is coming from. She's just floating there to begin with. Um, this is all going to end up being 0 anyway, because this could be any number times 0 is going to be 0. So we don't even have to do the math inside the parentheses. You can if you want, of course. And then we know on the other other side of things, Valentina and the camera are separate now because she has thrown the camera one direction. She's going to end up traveling the opposite direction, so they are definitely two separate objects at this point. One of them we know is 2 kilograms. The other um, we know is 68 kilograms from the, from the problem right above. Right? So then at this point, just like any of the other problems, treat each one of these as separate, each one of these expressions as separate problems almost, and then isolate for your variable, we come up with 0.35 meters per second. Does it make sense that she's traveling really slow? Well, she's at rest to begin with. She throws something away from her that doesn't have that much mass. She's got quite a bit more mass, so it would make sense that it doesn't cause her to move that much, but it causes her to move enough where she's able to get back to the spaceship and not be stuck out in space. All right, so now we're gonna now we're gonna try to figure out how long it takes her to get there. Well, we know that she has some sort of velocity. We know the distance that she's away from um, the spaceship. That told us 15 from from before, from up. Oh, excuse me. Um, from up here in the problem. So that's where I'm getting that 15 from over here. Um, and we know that we're solving for a time, and we already know the velocity. So the velocity we just solved for from above is 0.35. And there's a couple ways you can do this, which is why I'm writing it out a second way here. You could do it algebraically, you know, get t by itself, do all your all your multiplication by variables and division and everything else. Or we can do this as a cross-multiplication problem, which may seem kind of weird because you're like, well, how do I do cross-multiplication on three things? But remember... 0.35 and 0.35 divided by 1 doesn't change anything. That's still 0.35. So now I can actually do cross multiplication. Look at 0.35t equals 15. And then you'll end up with the, the same answer as we have right there for our time. Go ahead, take that time, plug it back into our expression, and both sides should equal one another. So 15 divided by 42.9 should be right around point, um, 0.35.